Hello, this is Elle. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on esophagus and some of the most commonly missed topics um, that students miss uh, during a step one exam. So without further delay, let's get right into it. So uh, esophagus can be divided into three parts histologically. Can you think of the three parts? They're the upper part, middle part, and the lower part. The upper, upper part is made up of what kind of cells? Stratified cells. Stratified squamous epithelium. What about the lower part? The lower part is made up of smooth muscle, made up of stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so the top part is stratified. The lower part is smooth. What about the middle part? What is the middle part made of? The mid middle part is made up of both stratified and smooth muscle. Okay, so I always get confused with these things. I'm not sure why. It's very easy to understand and to remember, but I always tend to forget it. So the lower esophageal sphincter or the lower smooth muscle cells, the squamous epithelium, Usually, sometimes they call it non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. It's just squamous epithelium, so don't get confused if you see non-keratinized, non-ciliated squamous epithelium. They are squamous epithelium, period. But when they do get uh, affected by GERD or gastroesophageal reflux, they do change and we call it Barrett's esophagus and what kind of cells does these cells have when the conversion happens from squamous to? You're probably right it's columnar epithelium from squamous they change to columnar epithelium and what kind of cancer do they usually call this when this change happens and when this Barrett's esophagus becomes cancerous? They call it adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. Okay, now I'm going to quickly copy some of the things that we talked about here just for your understanding so that you could probably take notes if you wanted to. If not, that's fine too, but I'm one of those people I'm always taking notes. Okay, now uh, when we talk about esoph esophagus and its cancer, um, the lower part usually have adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. What about the upper one-third? What kind of cancer usually the upper one-third of esophagus has? They usually have squamous cell carcinoma. And why? Why it's more squamous? Do you do what kind of pathology that is often tested? The pathology that is often test tested is people who eat a lot of smoked fish or smoked uh, food. And usually they talk about Japanese people who eat a lot of smoked food. They usually get the upper one-third esophageal cancer. Okay, there is a mnemonic uh, for all the risk factors of esophageal cancer. Can you think of the mnemonic? Or can you think of some of the risk factors which causes esophageal cancer? That's right, they are A for alcohol. They're A, B, C, D, E, F. It's very easy to remember. So A for alcohol, B for Barrett's, C for cigarettes, D for diverticuli or Zenker diverticulum, E for esophageal web, F for familial. So let me copy this down here so that you can write it down if you wanted to. So these are the different cancers. The risk factors for cancers, I'm sorry. These are the risk factors for cancers. And uh, often the question that gets me is when we're talking about Zenker diverticulum, um, they usually ask what layers of the muscle is usually involved. Is it mucosa? Is it mucosa plus submucosa? Or they ask if it's a true diverticuli or a false diverticuli. What do you think? It's a false diverticuli because the muscle that is only involved is mucosa. Let me quickly show you a picture of Zenker diverticulum. Um, it's right here. 
And uh, this is a diagrammatic picture of the Zenker diverticulum right here. And uh, you can see that right after the pharynx, it's an outpouching of the mucosa. Okay. And on x-ray, it's going to look like this. This big, big, big uh, outpouching is Zenker diverticulum. And you can see the esophagus kind of, kind of very thin here. Um, so that's Zenker diverticulum. Now, since we are talking about this area, this anatomy, and talking about esophagus and, and close to epiglottis, I want to ask you, what bug causes, or what bug is the most common cause of epiglottitis? And what kind of sign are we going to see in epiglottitis? First, the bug. The bug is Haemophilus influenza. That's the most common. And what kind of a sign we're going to see? We are going to see thumb sign. So let's see if I can find a thumb sign here to take a quick look. So right, this is a picture of the enlarged epi epiglottis and this is how the thumb sign is going to look on x-ray. It's a beautiful picture of a thumb sign. And what about croup? Croup is also uh, associated with um, tracheitis. What bug causes croup and what sign we're going to see on x-ray? The bug that causes croup is corny bacteria, diphtheria, diphtheria, and the sign we're going to see is stipple sign, right? And this picture of stipple sign is right here. Okay, so this is a picture of stipple sign. Now, um, one more thing I wanted to talk about about the lower esophageal lower esophagus is they often ask um, for the lower esophagus when are you going to see decreased peristalsis what kind of disease is going to cause decreased peristalsis and the answer is decreased peristalsis is usually seen in scleroderma or crest now my next question is what antibodies is responsible for scleroderma and what antibodies is responsible for crest for scleroderma it's can you get this it's anti scl 70 antibody and for crest is anti centromere antibody i always remember crest c for crest and c for centromere um and anything else that i wanted to talk about I think that's about it with esophagus. Um, also, Chagas can also cause decreased peristalsis of the lower esophagus. Um, and, oh, one more thing I almost forgot um, that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about um, dysphagia and odynophagia of the, of the esophagus. What is you know, and it has to do with, um, um, one of them has to do with immunosuppression. So can you think of, about what causes dysphagia and what causes odynophagia of the esophagus? And what is dysphagia and what is odynophagia? Okay, first say what is dysphagia? Dysphagia is when we find it hard to swallow. Okay, we find it hard to swallow. Um, but it's not painful. And usually it progresses from solid to liquid. Um, and what about odynophagia? Odynophagia is, it's nothing but inflammation of the esophagus. And what kind of signs you're going to see? You're going to see it's painful to swallow. Okay, it's painful to swallow. And um, what about what kind of pathology you're going to see with odynophagia? The painful one, odynophagia is a painful one. It's usually uh, seen in immunocompromised patients. So number one cause is candida. Second, CMV. Third, herpes. So odynophagia, the painful one, 
first is candida, second is CMV, third is herpes, and for dysphagia, which is hard to swallow but not painful, that is usually associated with esophageal cancer. So that's about it for esophagus. I'm going to see you, hopefully I'm going to see you on, um, on, on my next, um, next video about um, stomach. So, so hopefully you're going to check my other videos and please do check my blog for some of the notes um, I'll be posting and I will be updating as I do more and more review and add more and more stuff to it. So hopefully you stick around and do subscribe um, so that I do have some encouragement to keep going. Thank you. Bye for now.